Hi, my name is Maud Mosley. My pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to Tunes Tuesday, a series where I sit down with queer, 2S LGBTQ plus musicians and bands to talk to them about their music, their experiences, and much, much more. Today, I am joined by the Ontario-based band, The Soviet Influence. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Peter uh, Snow. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the singer, and I also play guitar and write a lot of the songs, but not all of the songs, for The Soviet Influence. Amazing. Well, I'm so glad you're here. And, yeah. you know, as somebody who writes majority of the songs, the first thing I really want to talk to you is about your lyrics because yeah. the lyrics throughout your discography are overtly political. They regularly reference, you know, being in a dying world, revolution, exploitation. But what I've also noticed through your songs is that they tend to have this ongoing sense of hope. And instead of, you know, relying on a sense of defeatism, they tend to discuss, you know, ideas kind of related to a light at the end of the tunnel and fighting for a better future. So what inspires you to write that hope into your lyrics? I mean, I think for us, I mean, me specifically, and also all of us in the group, we're, because we're, we see ourselves as a political group, you know, it, it, it's almost seems like it'd be kind of ridiculous. It's like, we're super political, but we're also like super pessimistic because like, what's the point of, you know, hammering on these points if you don't expect that things could be different, right? Because then you're just sort of, you know, shouting nonsense into the, into the world. So I think there, for me, there has to be that like, yeah, we can do better. Yeah, things can change. Yeah, if, you know, enough people want it and work for it, things can happen. Because otherwise, yeah, it, it just, it would be like, I mean, our, our stuff can be depressing. It would be even more depressing if we went in the direction of like, no, there's no hope, we can't change. Because so, so that's important to me. That, that, that's, I, it's, I don't want it to just be sort of like, you know, like disaster porn, right? Like, here's all the awful things, you know, isn't everything just terrible? You know, I want to be like, here's some bad stuff, but here's also like, we can do something about it. You know, we can actually fight because I don't want to give up. I mean, you know, I still hopefully have a lot of years left in my life. I don't want to just be like, well, you know, that's it. I'd like to, I'd like to fight for a better, a better world and a better future and, and to change things in, in, and things have changed, you know, a lot in my lifetime in various ways for good and bad. And so I've certainly seen that as possible and, you know, for, for things to improve, you know, particularly talking about to LGBTQ plus, you know, that has changed immensely in my lifetime. Um, so, so that also gives me hope that like people, you know, the more I get to know people, I see like in there, there's a will in people. If you give them a reason and you give them a good enough argument to change and to work for change, they will, like they're, they have open hearts. So, so yeah, I think like, even when I get really, really depressed about the state of the world and I write songs that way, I still want to have that little tinge of like, you know, but maybe not, maybe something can be different and we got to try for that. You know, and if I'm going to stand up on a stage and sing about this stuff and, 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 and tell people about it, then I, I have to think that there's a reason for that, that, that what I'm saying can actually do something versus just, again, just shouting into to nothingness. So I think that's where a lot of that drive comes from for me. And I think in the band broadly, I think we all kind of feel that way. The other guys are very much on board with sort of what we do and, and how it is. Um, and, and want the band to be that way. And, and, and we've been really lucky that the people who've supported us have, have agreed with that and have also felt, shared that hope of like, hey, like maybe if we say the right things and we say them enough, you know, and, and we get out and do stuff, people will actually, you know, buy into what we're selling and, and hopefully, you know, change a bit. So, so that's, I think that's where that comes from. Yeah, it's optimism to, to a point. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's really great. And I think it's super important to be communicating that in your music because, you know, when we see a lot of people in these political movements, that pessimism, that, you know, not finding hope in anything is what causes such a big sense of burnout um, and can have people, you know, really drop out of wanting to be the ones to create and push and fight for that change. Um, so I'm really glad, you know, that that's something that you see the importance in. Totally. Um, so, yeah, because like I said, I have those days where I'm like, everything sucks and nothing's ever going to get better. And why am I bothering? Why do I go on Twitter and argue with people and try to change people's minds about things when it's very clear that they don't care and they have their own opinions? But I mean, I can't live like that forever. I mean, I have to think that, hey, like, this isn't the end and we can do better than we're doing. Um, so, yeah. That's definitely. 
And then to dive deeper into your music, you recently released a new album in 2021 called Socialism and Introduction. Uh, what are you hoping listeners take away from this album? I hope it, you know, the, the album hints at a lot of stuff. And one of the big things that I tried, I mean, I, I wrote the lyrics to all the songs on, the, on that record. And one of the things in, lyrically I was really trying to come across was like, when we think about building a better society or different society, it can't just be about like political structures. It can't just be like, you know, or even about like economic stuff, which gets talked about all the time and, and is important. We also need to think about like human relationships, like how do people interact with each other? So, you know, the songs on there are split up between those two sort of categories. So one is like, you know, political stuff, like, you know, who, you know, who, who owns the work that you produce? You know, who, think about that. Who is that? Is it you or is it somebody else? And what does that mean? Um, you know, those kind of things, um, you know, and on the other hand, it's songs about like, hey, like, we just need people to care about each other because that's important too. Like people have to care about each other. People have to have empathy for one another. People have to, you know, to, to, to want to make a better world together, you know, and if someone's falling down or if someone's like wants to retreat from society because they can't deal with it anymore, then that's fine. And someone should maybe go with them and support them and help them on their journey, you know? Um, so, so I wanted to really have all of that in there because I felt like, you know, as, as much as we can, you know, I could write 10 really political songs about really, you know, hardcore socialist ideas. And, I, and we have stuff something like, like that. I also want to talk about human relationships and how they're really at the core of what makes a better society is the way that people interact with one another, you know? So when you talk about you know, the intersectional stuff, like, you know, talk about racism, classism, you know, uh, sexism, all that stuff, you know, at the core of that is the way that humans interact with each other and the way that we see each other as people, you know, and, 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 a, and really a loss of empathy, right? Because when we make someone another, whether it's along racial lines or, or gender lines or whatever you want, pick your, you know, pick your way you want to separate people, what we lose is the empathy for the person that's at the core of that. We, we forget that they're a human being and we turn them into this this creation that we've, we've invented um, to classify things. And, and without that empathy for one another, you know, I thought that was one of the great things about sort of the workers movement in sort of the early 20th century was like, these were people who legitimately cared about each other and were like willing to go to war and die, you know, in the labor movement for each other and for other people. Like they weren't just doing it for themselves. They were doing it for all workers. And that's amazing, right? And we've lost a lot of that in modern times. We're very much more individualistic, at least in, in North America. Um, and, and in the West generally, you know, we've, we don't necessarily always, other than on patriotic sort of nationalistic nonsense, we don't, we don't fall out for each other um, as often as, as certainly, you know, in, in terms of economic uh, situations as people used to. So anyway, so, you know, thinking about, when I was thinking about all of that and I was writing these songs, it was like, that was on my mind really strong. It was like this empathetic thing. So I want people to take that away. Like human relationship is important. And if you're trying to relate your message to people, and I'm not an expert on communicating messages to people. That's certainly not. But I am an expert in some ways on human beings um, and, and how people interrelate with each other. It's a big part of what I do professionally on, on top of music. And, you know, I think we need to remember that. If, if I had way more success on social media interfacing with people, not by, you know, yelling at them and calling them names and saying how they're terrible. And just about challenging their ideas and being like, you know, this is the way I see things. And I see how you see things. You know, I had an interaction recently. There was a big scandal. Well, I don't know how big it was, but there was a scandal with Matthew Good, who was a musician that I used to really look up to and came out that he had done all these sort of horrible things. And I was getting these discussions with people. And I remember talking with one person, in, you know, you know, online and being like, you know, this is just the way I see it. Like if, if this stuff is even, you know, I believe the people that are talking about it. And, and like, honestly, like, I don't have to be a fan of this person. It's not life and death for me. You know, like if, if they're a terrible person, then I'm fine to let go of their stuff. And, and ultimately it was interesting that me and this person who had been put up says, we kind of came to an agreement on that and said like, yeah, like why would we want to support someone like that? And so it was amazing to me how like by not getting into the vitriol, which is really tempting. Like sometimes you just want to like scream at people and tell them how awful they are. But by not doing that, you kind of, you create a space for dialogue and that's not going to work with everybody. You get those, you know, some people who are just so different than you and so honestly terrible that you're never going to get anywhere with them. But there, there are enough people that you can kind of build a bridge a bit and then, you know, slowly watch them move. I mean, it's going to be a while and you might not actually see them get there. But, you know, I, I see our, our role is, is helping build that bridge and, 
and you know, there's people that, I mean, that listen to our music. I know there's people that listen to our music that don't agree with us politically, because I know some of them. And <laughs> if they still listen to it and they still engage in it and they still engage in a conversation about it, you know, I, another band that I'm friends with and I made some posts about how, what I think about Canada as a country and kind of how awful and colonistic it is as a colonial power it is. And, and they disagreed with me, but we could still have a conversation about it, you know? Um, and we're still friends at the end of the day. And, and, and they thought about it, you know, I don't know if they changed their mind and we haven't figured that out, but, but they thought about it. And I think that for us, that's really important. You know, I think you see that, uh, with other bands too, that are, that do this well, I think is they challenge people to think about stuff, you know, um, and, you know, the, you know, famously game bands like the clash, you know, they did that, the police, they did that even like, you know, in Canada, you know, there are bands that, that not as overtly as us much more, uh, occasionally we'll bring in these kinds of things and you know kind of move people a little bit so yeah that's that's what i want people to take away that there's a human element and empathy is important and if you want to think about these things and move people on these things then you need to kind of meet people where they're at within reason um and go from there yeah i think that really beautifully connects to the idea that you know people say the revolution starts at home um and mm -hmm. i really relate that to what you're saying about you know how these are all about our interpersonal relationships and then hopefully those you know positive interpersonal relationships can build a bigger better system absolutely yeah, yeah. So there's then, one guy i really love. oh sorry go ahead sorry. no go ahead I was, there's one guy i really love eugene debs who was an american famous american uh socialist who ran for president a bunch of stuff way back in the 20th century and, and his whole thing was like there is no human being who like, you know, in the, in the labor class, like he had uh, different things to say about the sort of capitalist elite, but who I am not equal to. Like, I, I look at someone who's in jail. I look at someone who's destitute and I am them and they are me. Um, and there is, you know, I don't see a difference um, just because their circumstances are different. And I love that idea, you know, just because someone is doing better or worse than us in the system that we've created does not change the fact that we're all, you know, human beings and we're all sort of stumbling through life. Anyway, just wanted to add that. <laughs> Absolutely. And then the other week on Tunes Tuesday, Miel was talking about the 1492 mixtape, which is a compilation album in support of the legal fund for 1492 Land Back Lane. And you are also a part of this compilation. So why did yeah. you decide to contribute a song to it? Yeah, I mean, that's a huge issue for us. So um, um, just broadly, I mean, Indigenous peoples in Canada have just been, I mean, I'm sure you know, <laughs> treated with, uh, you know, the worst, the worst, the worst. There's, there's not really words for it. I mean, I have a trouble, trouble finding words. So, I mean, I'm a little bit older. So I, you know, when I was a kid, we had Oka in Quebec. We had Ipawash here in Ontario. Two big standoffs and lots of violence. Um, the first um, blockade in Caledonia, the one that preceded the Douglas Creek Estates, the one that happened before it. And you know, it, it, it's always been kind of, I grew up in this milieu of like, people saw indigenous peoples as this other sort of thing. So I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, which is really close to um, the Six Nations Reserve. And, you know, but there was, it was sort of this mystical other place that people only went to if they needed cheap gas or cigarettes. And like, that was the whole understanding of it. But it's, it's not that obviously. I mean, as you grow up and you learn about people and you learn about, you know, sort of indigenous culture, it's like, and how, you know, the many, many cultures that there are, um, how broad it is. So, so it's been an important issue, you know, and when I was in school, I, you know, first got introduced to um, the idea, you know, you grew up as a kid, particularly when I grew up, you know, it was sort of like people came to North America and they settled and it was, you know, whatever. And then the indigenous people were here and then they were called them natives at the time and, and they just, they were gone and it was whatever. Um, and that was kind of how it was handled, which was obviously a complete distortion of reality. Uh, but then I, I ran into uh, Bartolomeu de las Casas, who was a, um, a contemporary of Columbus. He was, a, he was a priest who came over with Columbus. And, uh, and he wrote about all the terrible things the Spanish were doing um, to, the, to the first peoples that they met. Um, and that sort of was like, okay, well, this, this sounds awful. Um, and then learning more over the years. And then I went to school for social work. So I had I actually had an, a, a couple of classes about Indigenous peoples in Canada and the issues they face and learning about residential schools and, um, and the hospitals and like everything, all this stuff. So it's always been important, you know, for, for a long time for me that 
that you know we need to recognize that better and as a band at a core level we all recognize i mean 1492 land back lane what they're doing um you know and then out west too what's going on in bc right now and and just generally the way that our government has handled this whole situation for the last 200 plus years as a country or i guess it's 150 years or whatever as a country and then you know 300 years before that as uh you know settlers yeah it's so important to us that we recognize the harm and when we talk about reconciliation and um you know we talk about the truth and reconciliation you actually have to show you how important this is to me i actually have a copy of the call to action on my desk that i, I flip through every once in a while just to remind myself of what we're supposed to be doing um and are not doing um you know reconciliation is our job i mean i don't i don't know about you mod but for me i'm not indigenous i'm pure settler in fact part of my family were came to to north america in like the 17th century so like my people have been you know doing nasty stuff to indigenous peoples for a long time um you know it's my job it's our job to do the work of reconciliation it's not up to the and we expect them to do it all we actually have a song that i wrote uh, that'll hopefully come out sometime in the next six or eight months about that actual topic that like the whole thing from our side has been to say, okay, well, you guys need to do something like, you know, we messed up. Sure. But you know, you got to fix it. And, and that's nonsense, right? That's, that's exactly opposite of how it's supposed to be. Um, so when this opportunity came up to support, you know, you know, and, and, and we've all donated in our ways, but to really connect ourselves to that movement and say like, we, this is important to us. We care about this. This is something people need to pay attention to. Um, so I jumped at that because, you know, it's like, let's be part of this. Let's, you know, and it's done pretty well from what I've heard, and, um, which is great. Um, and, and raise some money and, and, and that's what matters um, at the end of the day. Um, but also putting our name to it, right? I think one thing about our band is we're not afraid to put our names to things. In the beginning, I handle all our social media. And in the beginning, I was kind of like, I don't know, I didn't really know what to do like I know what to do with my own social media personally because I just I me. Mean, but you know you have like a band and it's like you have a reputation and you have a whatever and you're kind of like okay, well how do we handle that and then I got some really good advice from a couple of people which were like you know what you guys have a thing and you really need to lean into it and that was all I needed and I was like yeah you're right and this was from someone who knows what they're talking about and it's like you're right we do need to lean into it so we have leaned into it and we're like we're going to put our name on anything that we care about we're going to stand up for the stuff that matters to us and you know we're not going to hide from that and uh, because at the end of the day, like, even as a musician, like, yes, I want people to hear my music, but because of that piece of it, I even more so want people to hear the message that we're talking about and to look for the things that we're talking about and go out and learn about them, you know? And I say to people sometimes when they ask about things like 1492 Land Back Lane and, and other Indigenous issues, it's like, don't go and find an Indigenous person and be like, explain this to me. They've already explained it a million times. Just go look. The information is out there, you know, um, you can find it if you want it. You know, I've done probably now three different, you know, other like one school one that was actually organized, but then like some other um, online ones, you know, courses about the history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and sort of the relationship with settler culture. And, you know, and I didn't have to go and find someone to teach me that. I found it. It's there. The information is widely available. You can follow the social media for for like 1492 Land Back Lane and, and you know, and, um, and many, many wonderful Indigenous people are sharing this stuff freely, you know, without even having to ask, just go find it, you know, do the homework yourself. So that was part of also why this was important to us, you know, and I knew it would be a good opportunity for us to kind of push this agenda stronger um, because you know, well, we're part of this, look what we're doing, you know, and, and, and I've seen it, you know, I think some people I know who, who maybe thought differently have started to think, more in line with, I think, closer to what reality is in that situation. So yeah, that's why that was important to us. I mean, it's it's a really important issue and it, it is the most important issue in Canada. Like I, there is no other issue in Canada more important than the way that we treat indigenous people. Because that is, I mean, if you wanna try and stand up and be proud of this country, I don't know how you do it. Like, I, I don't know how, you, how someone could stand up and say, I'm really proud of Canada when you've got how many, I don't even know the number, how many communities have no access to clean water? You know, you've got um, how many indigenous people have been murdered by police in our country. Um, you know, recently hospitals have been in the news and that's been an ongoing issue forever. 
you know, the forced sterilization. I mean, it's so many things. It's just so much. And it doesn't stop. And you get a prime minister who promises that he's going to do something about it and then spends his time suing, you know, residential school survivors and suing whoever to, yeah, to prevent, you know, whatever ju judgment has been held against uh, the, the Canadian government. So, yeah, for me, that's where we're at. And, you know, I, I'm not willing to sit by with that anymore. Um, as much as, you know, it's very easy to sit by when you're a white settler in Canada. You can just kind of be like, well, whatever, it's not my problem. Um, <laughs> but, it, I mean, it should be. It should, it, should, it should hit you, like, so hard in the chest when you think about the garbage that Indigenous peoples have had, have been given as, like, oh, you know, and been told that they should be grateful for the absolutely horrific treatment they've received. So, yeah, that's, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> absolutely. That's why we're on. And speaking of doing that work, if you want to learn more about 1492 Landback Lane, potentially why they have a legal fund to donate to that, or learn more about Landback initiatives in general, I will be making sure to link related you know, subjects to that below this. I will also be linking where you can listen to the Soviet influence below, where you can find them on social media to stay up to date. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciated this conversation today. Stay tuned for next week and the Soviet influence will be playing us out. Mm -hmm.